No, he's so fast. Slightly faster. Your skin is as smooth as my favorite pebble. It appears as if someone is speaking to me. How odd. Um, a Bahari crab? What a delightful little creature. I particularly enjoy the way it scuttles to and fro. Oh, one in oneness. If I do not fish, I become filled with great longing. This is true of all Galdors who do not fulfill their oneness. I shall likely still be here when you return. Hey, Anar, what are you doing at my house? Gil 527 has been looking forward to your visit. Greetings, Zo. Since our recent venture to the garden, I have been beset upon by a most disturbing malfunction. I find that information previously stored within my rune workings has been removed. You mean you forgot something? Is that what forgetting is? Oh no, I now mourn for humans that as they must frequently find themselves in a distressing state of losing pre precious previously held information. What can I do to help? The information I find myself now without is an auditory frequency. I find I no longer retain the auditory frequency of my creator's voice. Do you think you might be able to help me recover my lost functions? I find that engaging in my oneness brings me less satisfaction than before. I'll see what I... wait. I'll see what I can do, but no promises. I... he's... yeah. This is more complex than I think it is. My creator's name was Mudan. His job was to talk a lot and tell other humans how to be better at humaning. Coaching? Surely someone must have stored his auditory frequency somewhere. You are woven Wait, the king's head. voice? Is Mudan a king? Our most well-learned person is Cleary, so... So what do you think of our history with Umbra? Um... How can I learn more? Hmm. Your curiosity will get you in trouble one day. Nevertheless, this is all the library is authorized to provide. If you want to know more, you'll have to ask elsewhere. You see, books on the war, especially volumes from Umbra, are heavily restricted within the Republic. I certainly wonder why. Okay. Despite my best efforts, I have been unable to obtain any for our library. So, if you ever happen upon one, consider bringing it to me. Yes? Oh, okay. Do you know who Mudan is? Yes, he was a human king and his reputation was somewhat controversial. Some people revered him fervently, viewed him as an almost godlike figure. Others, not so much. I do have some writings on him downstairs if you'd like to check them out. Oh. Just do me a favor and ignore my sister's fictional account on the subject. Okay. That makes me curious on what she has to say. Remember, keep your voice as a whisper. You are not going to believe my latest theory. There is a grand mystery out there just waiting to be solved. I must be the first to uncover it. Do you know who Mudan is? You mean the Phoenix's divine son? Of course I know who he is. I eagerly wait his return return? It's only logical to assume that when the rest of the humans emerged from the underground, he would too. Those in the know believe that when he emerges, he'll reshape the world in his image and save us all from our follies. Or, you know, destroy the world as we know it, depending on his mood. Okay, Eloisa. Does Hecla know who Mud Mudan is? What is it you require? Do you know who Madon is? If my records serve me, he was the head of human back in human times. He was also Aina's creator. I did not have personal experience with him, so I cannot aid you further. Perhaps the gardener could be of more assistance. Ooh! He encountered more humans than me, given he was not locked up in a vault with nothing other than dolls to keep in company. Well, okay. Return anytime you like. What about Gina? When left to their own devices, humans will befriend local... Sorry, I have a bad habit of talking to myself. Do you know who Mudan is? Yes, he was a king around the time of the collapse. A lot of the writings in the University Library run 
mentions a rebellion against him and a civil war. Perhaps the civil war was what eventually led to the collapse, or perhaps they were both in response to an external cause. It's hard to pin anything down for sure. Hmm. Okay. So, we know Tamal is old, right? But not how old. But also, she might know who Mudan is. Oh, why, hello there, darling. I wasn't expecting to see you again so soon. Do you know who Mudan is? Yes, I know more than perhaps anyone on the subject. You know, since my dear grandmother was a member of the Order, most people know him as a king, but uniting that rabble wasn't his only or even his greatest accomplishment. He was also a great practitioner of magic and the best who ever lived. He harnessed flows in ways Majiri can only dream of, in ways that makes the poor order shake in their boots. I would really like to shake his hand if you know what I mean. Oh. Oh. I keep thinking you'll bull me. No wonder Anar is so unique okay what do the back rooms have juggling and mm, this is really legible not touchable nope um, no why is that inside out don't know what about this ages ago before the time of the great dragon's birth a lonely phoenix lived in the land beyond the veil to satisfy her great longing for a companion, she created man. The first among the men she created was called Mudan. Mudan's bones were carved from the stone of the Kilima Mountains. His flesh was formed from the clay along the Nyoka River, and his heart was a pulsing flowstone. Mudan ruled over humanity for three hundred years of peace and prosperity, until the balance of the world shifted. Wicked men with wicked hearts wrought wicked spells. The byproduct of those spells was called Shadow. Shadow became like a hungry beast and roved across the world, devouring everything it touched until one day Mudan took up arms against the Shadow. He pierced his spear through its heart, but it only laughed and said, You think you can stop me? You are man, I am, and I am Shadow of Man. The darkness that wakes in me is the same as the darkness that sleeps in you. Mudan then examined his own heart and discovered sleeping veins of shadow within the pulsing flowstone. Mudan went to see the great sorcerer Sadil and asked him to extinguish the shadow in his heart. Sadil told Mudan, I can extinguish the shadow, but you will be extinguished as well, my king, for the darkness that wakes in a shadow is the same darkness that sleeps in you. Mudan told the sorcerer to do what he had to do. Do what you must do. I wish not to live while the world around me dies. Oh. Wendora Chebo. Selections from Late Cataclysm Era. Human Mythology. Interesting. What about that book? The Epic of Mudan. Translated from Late Human by Theo Juma. Once upon a time there lived a great king named Mudan. The people loved him because he provided them with bountiful mute gifts of magic and music and life everlasting. He married the most beautiful woman in all the world, Queen Kestra. The queen had beautiful black hair that shone polished obsidian, jasper brown skin, and emerald eyes and ruby lips. Under Mudan's rule, things were good. Nothing bad ever happened. But his wicked counselor, the sorceress Adil, was jealous of Mudan. He was jealous of his wisdom, of the people his of the love his people had for him, and for his good looks. Because while Mudan was made in the Phoenix's own image of perfection, Sadil was hunchbacked and ugly as a toad. But most of all, he was jealous of Kestra. Evil Sadil lied away at night, conspiring on how one day he could make the queen his. Until one day con he conceived of a plan. He knew the king and queen went down to the Phoenix Shrine each day for the morning prayers. All he had to do is to set his wicked plan in motion was get there before them. As the king kneeled down to pray, Sadil used his magic to disguise his voice. He called Mudan, 
This is the phoenix. I call on you to stop what you are doing. You must stop be building beautiful cities with spires that tower like trees and using magic to one bring wonder to your people. You must end their everlasting lives. But why would I do that? The good king was shocked. He thought only good had come from the magic he brought to his people. Because, Sadil paused, he had not thought this far ahead. Because the magic that you use in your spells drains my realm, it is killing me. Oh no, Wudan was quite horrified. You gave me and my people life, great phoenix. I will end the theft of your magic at once. As Mudan left to tell his people of what he had learned, Sadil snickered. Without the magic, certainly Mudan's people would turn on him. Then their love and Kestra's would soon be his, much to Sadil's chagrin. People loved Mudan so much, they supported his effort to lessen their magic to save the phoenix. This would not stand. Sadil now knew the only way to defeat Mudan was to kill him. Sadil poured over many volumes and dark arcane magic in pursuit of a plan. Eventually, he found what he had been missing, been searching for. Oh, the rest of the pages are missing? Darn it. Okay, um, what about inside here? There's lots of flow stones. There's like five in here. Um... Bookcase disappeared as a piece of paper crumpled up on the floor. Hmm, and another flowstone in the corner where Cleary sits. I wonder if she's inspecting it. So there's six flowstones in the library back here, but no other books apart than from the two I read. And then Hecla mentioned the gardener. So let's go speak to him. I believe I need to crack this open with another pickaxe movement. There we go. Um, to the hub. Um, is this the gardener? Yes. And it's right. This way. This way. Yes. Have you heard of Mudan? I'm sorry, but that information is available only to those without ad administrative access. Can I have administrative access? No. Oh, dear. Explain how Einar lost his memories. I am sorry to hear that my attempt to fix your constructor's malfunction created a greater malfunction. The human named Mudan had a flow console on premises, but I do not have access. Those files are restricted to human personnel with level zero clearance. Perhaps if you search the garden, you'll be able to obtain such clearance. Regardless, please send my condolences to your constructor. I did not intend to cause him harm. Hmm. It seems I may be able to transport you closer to the console if you wish. Uh, yes, please. Hooking up Matter Movement Network for transport. You may experience a slight itching sensation. Ugh. Porty port? Oh. Wait, where? What is this? Exit pipes. I'm in the pipes. Oh. Wait. I've not been here before. What is this place? To... What if I go straight? If I go straight, it goes to the dead end. Okay, okay. Mm, if I turn right and right again, it dead end. Then what if I go straight instead of turning left instead? Oh, there's two ways. I'll go right first. Nope, not that way. This way? I feel like a monkey. Oh. Okay. What is up here? This is different. And the walls are black in here. Or is it just really dark? Ooh. This is new. 
mysterious device password hidden the first fish my lost friend ever caught gill um g i l one correct input gill one okay okay go to menu menu voice logs day one i have made an interesting discovery today i have taken a constructor galdor and given him an additional oneness the desire to fish i fear an additional oneness would cause confusion in a galdor or even a total breakdown of functions on the contrary having more than one purpose seemed to make this particular galdor more complex more human i will continue this experiment and record my findings here i think i will name him Einar. As you click through the logs, you notice many of them are corrupted and no longer play. Day 83. Today, Einar gave me a hug. When I asked why, he said it related to the oneness I gave him to connect with others. I don't know if the hug was based on emotional connection or he just interpreted the connect oneness to connect too literally. Day 309. Einar seems to have created his own oneness. He has started to collect shiny pebbles. When I asked him why, he said they were aesthetically pleasing. I will have to look back and cross-reference his other onenesses to see how he developed this trait. Day 944. Today, Einar asked if he could go through the looking glass with me. I told him it wasn't safe for a Galdor to go where I'm going. He told me it was even less safe for me. I suppose he's right, but I have lived longer than I should have anyway. How many people have died just so I could outlive any reason for living? Maybe Sadil was right. Maybe all things must come to an end after all. You see the option to forward the logs. Forward to Einar. Message forwarded. Ah. So it's Gil 1. G-I-L. Numero 1. Go to menu. I want to see what else. Flow and function. Oh. You open the file to see a detailed map marking the direction of flow through Kilima and Bahari. It looks like a complex undertaking. Interesting. Voice logs. I've already gone through all this. Gardner? Go to menu. How do I leave? I guess I can only send it to... I have to send it to Einar to exit. Huh. Okay. Fascinating. What is this? Kestra. Where do I begin? I know how much he meant to you. I'm, he meant just as much to me. But I can't keep blaming me. You can't keep blaming me for choices he made. You say I forced his hand when I enacted the mirror protocol. But how was I supposed to know he would respond the way he did? If you don't talk to me about it, please talk to someone. I don't like to think of you out there alone. I don't like being here and al being he alone in here. A long paragraph is scratched out. This is pointless. She doesn't want to talk to me. Hmm. Things here, but no more notes anywhere. They hid one back there at one point. Huh. And what is this? Not an exit. Hmm. So I have to go back and find the way I came from. Interesting. Forward. Um, it was this, but I think it was this way as well, and here. Yes. Okay, and exit pipe. Mm -hmm. Where am I? I wonder if you could find this place alone without the gardener's help. Uh, oh. Interesting location. I don't think there's a way out of here. Back 
at the beginning. Oh. I... Wait, why is there water dribbling? Okay, so that's which pipe I came from. Huh. And there's this. To the hub. Let's go talk to Enar. Is this the entrance? Nice. Alright, time to go find Enar and see what he has to say. Oh wow, there's an entire fishing crew here. It is time to enjoy emotional bonding. I received your correspondences from my creator. Thank you. Hearing his voice again gave context to many of my rune workings and caused me to re-experience. Re Hearing his voice again gave context to many of my rune workings and caused me to re-experience old pathways that I did not know I longed to re-experience. I want to hear more about Mudan. Of course, what would you like to know? I could tell you about his favorite food or maybe his favorite color for socks. More about the mirror protocol. I'm sorry, but I find my rune workings regarding that phrase cannot be accessed. Perhaps it has something to do with my experience in a garden. I do not know. I do not wish to cut your face flopping short, but I would like you to meet me by the boat in my cave since I find face flapping with you enjoyable. I have something to show you. Oh. Your absence compounds my loneliness. To the cave! Oh, Ena's here already. I didn't really notice there was a bright room in here the first time I came in. It is time to enjoy emotional bonding. As you can see, I have displayed the music box you box you unexpired in my collection. I was hoping you would sit down and enjoy its melodious audio frequencies with me. You um this was Mudan's music box, right? Yes, it was. I feel like listening to it will help me re-experience the rune workings we created together. Haney told me that when you, someone you love expires, it sometimes helps to remember the pleasant experiences you shared with them. Also, that it helps to spend time with friends. I thought this could be an opportunity to do both. My creator and I used to listen to harmonious melodies while fishing together in a water faring vessel, much like this one. Would you like to engage in this activity with me? That does sound nice. I will go get the music box. Meet me in the boat so we can begin remembering. It contains flow. That was so cute. Oh, my tail just goes crazy. Well, I wonder if the box has anything to do with mirror protocol. But now I understand why Anar has a boat right in the middle of his cave. It must be Mudan's boat, too. Well, the boat. A similar boat, at least, if we figure that out. And this is what you get if you give Inar all your pebbles. Hmm. This is Inar's fishing log. And all his pebbles! Just sitting in little piles with ornaments. That's such a cute little cave. Okay, that's the end of it. If you want to stay tuned for the rest of Anor's conversations, uh, that got me to friendship level 5 with him. Please stay tuned. If not, thank you so much for joining me. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this, and I'll see you guys in the next video you tune into. Till next time, bye bye make me want to stop my life of crime good to see you again i wonder why breath has the ability to answer well i can ask him this question at least
And Nio. We'll find out. Do you know who Mudan is? You mean that character Nio played in the Eclipse pageant? Wait, Nio played the character in the Eclipse pageant? Honestly, all I remember about the day play is getting shut down or opening on opening night. Cause Oh, cause Kenyatta talked me into kissing her so we could piss off her mom. What? Alright. I went along with it because of course I did. The truth be told, she's not as good of a kisser as she thinks she is. Huh. I wish I could fit you in my soup flask. Oh wait, that's that's creepy. So Naya played Mudan in a pageant? I take a day Wonder if he knows much more. Always good to see you. We don't get many guests out at the farm. Do you know who Mudan is? You mean the ancient human king? Not only have I heard of him, but I played him in last year's Midsummer Eclipse pageant. He was this super awesome, super handsome, super smart guy that everyone loved. I don't get why they cast me, to be honest. I'm nothing like that. I'd say Nai is kind of handsome. He's not my type, though. But anyway, Kenyatta and Reth decided it needed some drama, so they made it all about the fact that his wife supposedly hooked up with his best friend. Whoa. They kissed on stage to the scandal of the whole town. Eshe freaked out so much she shut the whole thing down. Poor Kenyatta, I know she never would have done something to make her mom so mad if Reth hadn't talked her into it. Nayo, you don't understand Kenyatta at all. <laughs> you make my heart beat faster than watching round ball. It is time to enjoy emotional bonding. Humans are both ancient and new at the same time. Fascinating. Um, Mukla has informed me of how you aided her emotional well-being after she learned the fate of child Sona. I thank you. Many organic beings do not consider the emotional well-being of Galdors. Our emotions may be different from yours, but they are not lesser. Um, you said you wanted a enchanted pupfish. What a delightful little creature. I think I shall name him Gil. Gil. Gil, which number this time? I, shall I wonder. A sensation akin to emotional turmoil. I'm sorry, my chest still broken. I look forward to conversing. Oh, I didn't see you there. I would say I feel startled, but that would be a lie. You wanted an in fathead minnow. What a delightful little creature! I think I shall name him Gil. Your passionate nature makes you suspect. You'd identify with the element of fire. Burn brightly, to little ember, but do not burn out. Oh, Einar. Emotions are transformed into a river of joy. Would you enjoy going fishing? Oh, I didn't see you there. I would say I feel startled, but that would be a lie. Hmm. What do you think of the expiration remembrance we had for Hecla's potato? The one where we turned the potato into a hot potato? I'm experiencing feelings of longing for the past. <laughs> it made me hungry. <laughs> ah, yes, I can see how those who ingest nutrients could find the smell of a burning potato appetizing. I mean, it's essentially baked or oven roasted potato or still be here when you return. grilled potato. Gil 527 has been looking forward to your visit. It stands to reason we would cross paths. Hmm. Being switched on and off again by the gardener was an odd sensation. It reminded me that at any time everything I am can just cease to be. Humans are lucky you don't have to deal with that. Is this longing? Would you like to touch your hand Humans are both ancient and, and new at the same time. Fascinating. Creatures of flow are easy to spot. Remember when looking for creatures of flow to er search for the light they emit. You Ooh. are woven deep into my. Would you enjoy going fishing? Oh, I didn't see you there. I would say I feel startled, but that would be a lie. It's good to see you, so the glow of the moon represents me of the first night I spent without my creator. I'm experiencing feeling of feelings of longing for the past. You really miss him, don't you? I do, but isn't, that is not what I was thinking about. The night my creator left, I made a new friend. She was a fluffy-tailed tree runt. She brought me a nut. I told her I cannot ingest nutrients, but I appreciated the gesture. 
Later, I turned the top of the acorn into a tiny fashionable head covering for Jill 3. It was quite humorous. <laughs> My emotions are transformed into a river of joy. Inar, you are adorable. I am experiencing new sensations due to your presence. Salutations. There are many unique uses for beings of flow. I am not an expert in crafting concoctions, but you should perhaps ask Mala if flow working is of interest to you. Oh, interesting, Einar. Interesting. Is this longing? I am experiencing new sensations due to your presence. It stands to reason we would cross paths. Tells me, do you have any interest in learning Galdorix? The process by which new Galdors are made. Ooh, yes, I'd love to make a Galdor. That is no good. No good at all. Power such as that should never be in the hands of someone who desires it. Oh. Oh. I shall Interesting. Sensation akin to emotional turmoil. Your presence helps postpone unwanted sensations. Hmm? I shall become saddened when you expire. I have been longing for our togetherness. You look as though you have something you'd like to ask. Um, would you like this ribbon tail, Ray? Oh. What a delightful little creature. I think I shall name him Gil. <laughs> I, ancient humans knew much of flow, but they did not properly understand it. They knew just enough to do much harm with it. Oh. Your absence compounds so, my loneliness. Does that mean Galdors understand flow? And we should learn how to... Utilize flow from Galdors? I wonder. Would you enjoy going fishing? You look as though you have something you'd like to ask. So I'm happy to see you. Gil 511 is currently experiencing gastrointestinal distress due to ingesting too many chocolates. Why would you feed a fish chocolate? What should I do? Um, let him rest? Excellent advice. I shall seek out Cheney as he is a skilled medical practitioner to see if he can help my G Jill. Return tomorrow and I shall update you on Jill's, Gil's progress. I am so confused. I you. Your skin is as smooth as my favorite pebble. It appears as if someone is speaking to me. How amusing. I talked to Tamala about Jill's insomnia. After she stopped laughing at me for my concern over the sleeping habits of a fish, she told me how to make a potion of rest. To create the potion, I must carry a, catch a fairy mantis, as they are quite elusive. I have recruited Ani for help. I will keep you updated on our progress. Oh, interesting. Is this... It is time to enjoy emotional bonding. Oh, I didn't see you there. I would say I feel startled, but that would be a lie. You want a enchanted pupfish. This has a pleasing shape. Thank you. Ani tried to help me catch a fairy mantis yesterday. He located one and failed to catch it 12 and a half times. Then I caught it in my first try. I was going to use a fairy mantis to make the potion, but it turned out that spending time with the mantis has made Jill feel better. They have now become inseparable. And for some reason, he no longer complains of a tummy ache. I wonder what the source of a sudden recovery could possibly be. Maybe he was just lovesick. Do you think Gil could have romantic intentions for the mantis? That is interesting. I shall teach him how to give chocolates. Oh, oh dear. Oh dear, what did I do? I created a monster. A river of joy. In our, your innocent would one need to help people Oh no, what did I do? What did I do? Gil 527 has been looking forward to your visit. Salutations. If you are curious, I wanted to let you know that Gil and his mantis friend 
are getting along swimmingly. I even saw her, her bring him a shiny pebble the other day. Oh, she took it from my shelf and sat it by his tank. Seeing their friendship blossom has created a warm sensation in my chest. Aww. Your absence compounds my loneliness. Um, I'm inside you. Guild 527 has been looking forward to your visit. I would say that it is pleasure to see you, but I know not pleasure, only oneness. You wanted, um, some glow worms? Many thanks for the fish nutrients. I shall use this to lure in many beautiful gills. Wow. Do tell me, do you fear expiration? Um, I fear expired meat. As you are meat, that must mean you fear your own expiration. I must admit, I have been thinking of your expiration often. I fear it and the feeling of loneliness that will come after it. Let us go fishing and distract ourselves from thoughts of your eventual expiration, much as my creator and I did. But I suppose that is all the more reason to enjoy our friendness now. Oh. Until we can experience togetherness again. I like that phrase, friendness and togetherness. Hey, Enar. Would you like to touch your hand to my hand? Oh. I didn't see you there. I would say I feel startled, but that would be a lie. Sometimes I wonder what it is like to forget. I remember everything. Good God, I can't imagine remembering everything. Some things are meant to be forgotten. Until we can experience togetherness again. Seeing you is akin to catching a new fish. Salutations. The divots and cracks in my head are not merely patterns, nor are they due to age. They are my rune workings. Surely, as a human, you must understand the crafting of runes. Actually, no. I suppose your thought patterns retaining that information has expired. My thought processes do not expire. Everything I have ever thought, I am still thinking and will be thinking forever. I wonder if that's how computers feel. I feel like we will be here when you return. Maybe not. Computers aren't forever. I look forward to conversing. I find that even the briefest of conversations with you bring me closer to the oneness. You wanted a fisherman's brew. I shall treasure this gift forever. That is, until it expires. After that, I shall lightly forget all about it. Wait, you just said you're not going to forget anything flow is what fuels me without flow i would cease to be without flow you would continue but you would watch many things in the world around you expire is this longing i have been longing for our togetherness the oneness is in all just as all are of the oneness the lake lotuses may not look like they are of flow but like they are of flow, but they are not. So they're not of flow? Only objects that glow with magenta are of flow. Wait. Does that mean lantern glow bugs aren't of flow? But what about Bahari glow bugs? Green plus purple. I guess that gives you blue. Maybe, maybe. Objects that glow of other colors are merely bioluminescent. Oh, okay. Please return in a timely manner. Thank you for clarification and Anar. I am experiencing new sensations due to your presence. It appears as if someone is speaking to me. How bemusing. Old rune workings have awakened in the village. Since this is just the beginning of such occurrences. I shall likely still be here. So there will be more temples or more ruins to explore. Ooh. 